I'm, I'm gonna ask a really, you know, tricky question now because obviously, I last time I got to speak to Mendieta and Canute, so you got some, you got some competition there, and I asked them for their top three players, and they, um, towards the end of the season, and they proved quite, quite correct. So I'm gonna ask you guys the same thing. So give me your two, your sorry, your three top young players to be able to look out for that are going to be replacing Messi so forth in the Hall of Fame in the future. Hmm. So you want to, you, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to go with someone who is probably well known by now in terms of Spanish football fans, but maybe beyond Spanish football, he's still very much a name up and coming uh, in the world of La Liga, and that would be Martin Odegaard, who is a real, he's a Real Madrid player, obviously. He was on loan at Real Sociedad. He was brought back to Real Madrid this season. So it'd be very exciting to see how he fits into the midfield and just how well he can actually do. Um, it was thought that maybe he would spend two seasons with Real Sociedad before going back to Madrid, mm -hmm. but he ended up going back now. Uh, he was definitely one of the best players in all of La Liga for last season, all the way up until the lockdown, he didn't have the greatest return to action afterwards. He had some issues, um, some injury issues, in there and, and something about his knee. Actually, Guillaume, I think, knows much more about this than I do. Um, but he is brilliant. And I think he's about 20, 21. He's got a very bright future ahead of him, a long career ahead of him. And he could really be someone that will be very much important for Real Madrid in the future and a leader for them in the middle of the park. Then speaking of another, another Real Madrid player, but out on loan would be Takafusa Kubo, who is at uh, Villarreal. He was with Mallorca last season. Mallorca were, um, they've been relegated to the second division. So he's been moved on to Villarreal. He's another hugely exciting prospect, very young teenager at the moment. Um, and clearly one of the best players from Mallorca. And um, yeah, just definitely somebody you need to keep an eye on because he has a spark to him. And um, my third choice. Whew. Always a tricky one, the last one. <laughs> <sighs> again, maybe I'm going to go with, with Reguilon. I mean, again, I know he's kind of, he's not a super unknown, but wow, I've gone for a Real Madrid team here, haven't I? Um, <laughs> Not intentional, I'll let you, by the way. I'll let you think about not, it not intentional, in not want. intentional. But anyway, um, a left back, Sevilla, on loan, fabulous player. I think he's, what, maybe 21, 22 years old, game, something like that. Um, just, you've got Jesus Navas on the right wing, veteran, class, experience, and you've got Regalón on the left. And he's just amazing and really fun to watch. And he's great in attack, he's great in defence, and another one who has clearly a very bright future ahead for him, not just with whether it's going to be Sevilla or Real Madrid, but with the Spanish national team too. So someone to definitely keep an eye on. Uh, you got you, you got top that, uh, Guillaume. Uh, the, that seems like a stout list. Well, if, um, if you're going to start watching La Liga and you want to look for three players that you don't know anything about, but you want in your fantasy league team, um, I've already mentioned a couple on the, uh, in the presentation. Definitely Sean Wiesman uh, as one goal scorer that uh, has got an amazing story. I think he's, the first bet he slept with was at 18. And I'll leave it at that because he's, he's an amazing uh, guy that has gone through a lot to actually get here. He never scored as much as he did last season. And uh, this summer they were all fighting for him. But I think the Ronaldo, um, the Ronaldo pull uh, is what took him to Valladolid. Obviously, he's ambitious enough to think that he can go to one of the big clubs in the world. And if he confirms that, then then he probably will. Uh, another young player of quality, a lot of quality, who didn't see much of because he was at Leganés, who, of course, went down. And then with a contractual dispute at the end, you didn't see much of the confinement either. That's Oscar Rodriguez, mm. uh, who... Uh, would just be at Sevilla a sensation. I'm convinced he will be mm. uh, because he's got quality to finish. Set pieces are great. Uh, better stats, I think, at some point than Messi in set pieces uh, he did have mm. this season. And, and then I'm going to mention two more. You can choose which one that are a little bit more known, but still not 20 and could be their year. Ansu Fati's one. Uh, Ansu Fati has got... He was a number nine. So while Barcelona get rid of Luis... Suarez, they, uh, they would try to get uh, Lautaro Martinez from Inter. But they've got a nine already in the side, which is this young kid 
that uh, Sven, apart from the last year and a half in which as he was progressing so quickly, he went to teams in which, because of his physique, and he was only 16, 17, he was put on, on the right-hand side. He's fast, he can dribble, uh, he's got an eye for a pass, he's got a calmness to do things. But he was a number nine the whole of his career. So we will see what, uh, what Kuman decides there, but uh, uh, he will be one. And then I think, uh, having gone through the, uh, the kind of adaptation that you need under Simeone, Joao Felix could be a sensation. Uh, he doesn't need much space. Uh, I think the team starts to to look for him when he's there, the ball goes to him and he creates where, where, when you were less expected. So this, this is just a bunch of, of them. Mm. That's, that's really a, that's a really, long list. Really impressive. Yeah, there's uh, de definitely ones to, to, to look out for. For me, uh, La Liga was at its best when you had like Valencia um, unexpectedly, you know, winning the league a couple of times. And then, you know, so it wasn't too much focused on two, you know, individuals. And I think, I think personally, just to, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, but do you feel that um, the teams now, because of Zidane, for example, not going, you know, breaking up this Galactico thing, um, are moving away from the individual big signings and now just more so coaching on, on individuals. So therefore, there's no individual stars like Liverpool, where you have, uh, you know, many players all on the same level, achieving the same goal. Well, do, you, do you agree? Well, I've got the impression that everybody's adapting to the new times. And uh, when, when you change, it isn't always because you want to, it's because you look around and you think it's impossible to compete against uh, the, the club state. It's impossible. Uh, so if, uh, if, if that uh, infinite amount of resources uh, are put on the table, obviously uh, the whole industry will be happy because there'll be more money. But it, it forces the, uh, uh, the change of, uh, of policy of, of Barcelona, Madrid, uh, even Atletico Madrid. Uh, so the ones that are having more difficulties with the whole pandemic thing as the, the big clubs, because they don't see the fans coming in, but they already have started an adaptation process that means uh, being more clever with the resources, having an infrastructure that means that you can actually get young players, uh, if not only from the, uh, from the lower ranks, young players from other parts that can come in. So I think Real Madrid have done a, a really good job on, on identifying that very, very quickly. And all of a sudden, they found their, their squad with, uh, with young players, mm. from Marco Asensio to Rodrigo, to Vinicius, to Alverde, to Odegaard. So you took, you know, uh, and if, if, if for whatever reasons they don't bring them in, like ha Hakimi, they can sell them for 40 million euros. So, uh, and Barcelona, for a while, obviously, they've been winning and having a player that just makes them win so easily or easier uh, has meant that they haven't looked at themselves and, and where they are in the world. Now they're forced to do so. And uh, I think it was uh, Terry mentioned, or uh, Andrea, Trincao, for instance. They look at the team now uh, and they already have started a transition. Perhaps some would say, and the Bert Bartomeu, the president said it himself, a little bit late, should have been done earlier, but you're talking about a team that will have in Trincao very exciting winger and an attack that could be say they get Lautaro Martinez or a striker they have behind Lautaro Martinez Coutinho Griezmann Dembele Dembele has been very very unlucky no, he's not going to be unlucky the rest of his career now mm. think of that and behind <clears throat> because I think Coman will play perhaps 4-2-3-1 or similar with two two midfielders that, that will have to be holding most of the time De Jong which will be given the freedom mm. but Pjanic next to him. Juventus, one of the Juventus' best players. And Piquet staying in and Ter Stegen. It's like, right, what well, seems like the transition is, is already taking place with a, with, a, with a bench with young players as well. So they are adapting to this. So um, on the back of that, it seems like Real Madrid have done it a little bit earlier. But Barcelona are in that process as well. And it's, again, mm. uh, you know, so we, we were, we've been treated so well by football in the last decade. Mm with all these superstars and all these victories and everything else. Now is the time to leave a different, look at it in a different kind of, kind of way. And those process of changes, to me, it's always been the most fascinating part of either the career of a player or the story of a club or the movement of a league. So uh, I'm, I'm, one, one of the things I was thinking as well is, um, uh, obviously we're missing the fans being there. Obviously, you know, uh, nothing can replicate that, that atmosphere. So I was going to ask you guys, what do you feel is the, the stadiums, you know, right, take away the obvious ones, Barcelona, Real Madrid and Atletico. 
Um, so I won't have you cheating on that one. But um, what are what are the ones the stadiums that you feel when we can actually go back, you know, to, uh, to, to the stadiums? You know, um, what are the ones that you need to go or that you recommend to fans to be able to go to? One hundred percent, the Sanchez Beach one, Sevilla's stadium. One hundred percent, they have. I'm sure you've heard the, the hymn that they sing at the beginning of the games. It, it's, it's spine tingling. It makes the hair raise on your arms. You know, it's, it's so powerful and it's so beautiful. And it's, it's, even if you're not a Sevilla fan, you just really love listening to it. It moves you, you know, and the crowd are great as well, too. It's a wonderful, vibrant, uh, energetic place to be, passionate place, very passionate place. You could say the same for the Benito Villamarín just down the road for Rabitas. Very, very passionate place to watch football. Um, for sure, you have to go there. You could also say San Mamés if you go to the very north of Spain. Mm -hmm. You go to Bilbao, you go to the Basque Country, another very historic club in Spain. Wonderful fan base too. Uh, very much get behind their club. Uh, again, they're just very fun, energetic places to go and to watch football and you've got noise wall-to-wall -wall noise the entire 90 minutes of the game um I, maybe we could throw in Cadiz now I've never actually been Guillaume you've probably been to a game down there before but I imagine just from what I've seen um on television it's it's a really fun place to go I mean there's a famous video from a few years back Whenever one of the linesmen, I think he got the call wrong or something like that. And they were just following, the fans were following him back and forth along the stands. <laughs> and they're, they're known for having a bit of fun too, you know. So I would say Cadiz would be a really great place to go. Not just for the stadium, but again, because of what the whole city offers uh, down there. So. And, and uh, Guillaume, you can't, you can't cheat and say uh, Espanol. No, no. We I don't think he wants division. to say that for this season. No. It's a top, it's a top stadium, by the way. But it's, it uh, is. But yeah. It's a really nice stadium. We'll be back. We'll be back very soon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Cardiff. Any excuse you've got, go to Cardiff. And this is one of the first talking footballs that that, that we've done. Uh, we've we were there and and kind of absorbing the atmosphere. I had been many many years ago, but. Um, you understand that very quickly if you go to one of the supporters' the close bars or uh, if you mix with the people at the club that uh, it is a special place. It is the, um, if I must say so, the Liverpool of Spain. You know, it's the funny people and, uh, and you know, they're very witty and they see life in a completely different, different way. So uh, it should be everybody's second favourite club, really. Uh, and uh, the, then the Wanda Metropolitano is a, mm. is a weird stadium in that He's huge, it's huge, but at the same time, and impressive, and when you have the lights on, it's spectacular. Um, but you walk in, and it's like, it's, it's, that's more than football. Uh, it's, uh, it's comfortable, uh, spacious, and uh, makes watching football really easy, if you like. You have to and throw in the lights and the ACDC Thunderstruck, too, because it adds to, the, to the environment at the Wanda. On the ground there. So, uh, you know, they, they little by little, they, they start adding more things like kiosks and things outside that you can have more of a, of a experience. But and the third one, you mentioned Sevilla, I have to mention Betis. Uh, the Benito Villamarín is, uh, is a stadium that, again, has got all that passion that you get in Sevilla, you get at, you get at Betis as well. Yeah, possibly uh, Sevilla have got a slightly better anthem, but they mm. sing a song as well at the beginning. They have their own as well. Which is also spectacular, and uh, and it means I mean Sevilla is just unbelievable. The the, the best stat in football, ten percent, ten percent of Sevilla inhabitants are season ticket holders of one team or the other. So how many people live in 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 say in London? What is it? Seven seven and a half million? Eight say eight yeah. million. That would mean eight hundred thousand people <laughs> being season <laughs> ticket holders. It's just unbelievable. Uh, so ten percent tells you, you know, the same passion you get in Sevilla, you get you get at Betis for sure. And and just just lastly, um, you know, what would your advice be to, to anyone following in your your you know you know following your career at the moment who wants to follow in your footsteps and get into broadcasting? What would your like advice be like if you just give me like one one piece of advice? I won't get you getting three now, 
Um, yeah, but what would you, what would you, uh, what would you, uh, advice would you give them? Okay, I'll keep it short. Um, perseverance, passion, and purpose. It's actually something my dad has drilled into me my entire life. And he said, find something you're passionate about and go after it wholeheartedly and don't give up. Just keep going because you're going to trip up along the way and it's going to be very difficult and very challenging. Um, and you'll face a lot of obstacles, but you have to just keep going. And that's where the passion part plays in because there'll be moments when you want to throw in the towel, but if you know you're meant to do it, like I always felt like I was meant to do this. I, I've always loved football. I played football growing up. Uh, I watched football my entire life. It, it just felt like a shoo-in for me that this is what I wanted to dedicate my, my professional life to. And so I think that you just have to just go for it, really. Just try your best. Keep going. There's so many different mediums and ways to break into it now. You've got social media. You can write your own blogs. You can start your own YouTube channel. Um, you can. I didn't get my undergraduate in, in journalism. I actually started a little bit later than everybody else. And so I got my master's in sports journalism and in communication. I started at 25. So it's never too late, really, to start. I mean, I know 25 doesn't sound that late. Most people start when they're 18, 19, or 20, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's never too late to start and just go for it 100% and give it your all. I subscribe everything that uh, Sembra has said uh, and I will add two things. Uh, one, don't forget to listen. Uh, listen, just listen and listen and keep listening. And from there you will learn. Uh, the day you stop listening, uh, you won't become a good broadcaster. And that's not just on the shows, it's just in, in the network, in, uh, listen to what's out there. Listen uh, and be humble enough to know that that is the the, big, the biggest thing you're always going to do to listen. Mm. Uh, and uh, and secondly, not to forget that this is a long term uh, long term marathon, if you like. Uh, mm -hmm. You if you think of the short term, if you think of impressing now, of actually using all your weapons, all your eggs uh, of the basket, you know, at the same time, then um, then you won't go far. Just, yep. just keep respecting people along the way and remember that, you, you know, if you're confident enough, you will be there for three decades, four decades. And uh, people don't forget when you get it wrong, as in if you let somebody down. So it's a long-term process this way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 100%. And to believe in yourself. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely a must. I, 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 would, I definitely would say. And, um, you, know, you know, I appreciate you guys taking the time out. And, uh, yeah, my... Been watching your YouTube, your new YouTube channel, you know, uh, especially lately. Everyone's been uh, glued to it uh, for the <laughs> official voice. And, uh, you know, some amazing work, you know, uh, in, on the channel. You know, very impressed with both of you guys. Thank you very Thank much, you very much Andre. Much.